Who's attack and game? Hey YouTube, it's Drizzle. How's it going? I'm uh, about ready to open up here a new delivery I got. It's uh, from a company called Sonnet, and this is their breakaway box. And what it is is an external GPU housing, a lot like the Alienware graphics amplifier that came with my Alienware 13. The difference is, is that this functions over the Thunderbolt 3 port instead of the proprietary Alienware graphics amplifier port. And so this can be used on a pretty wide array of machines as long as they have Thunderbolt 3. It'll work on PC or Mac and it will supposedly work on, like even if you had like an Ultrabook that had basically no dedicated graphics and just had uh, an integrated card, it supposedly will function and allow you to play uh, using even, like whether you wanted to use your laptop display or if you wanted to hook up an external display or multiple external displays, uh, you supposedly can use it. And what I'll be doing is there again, I've got the 550 watt version of this. Uh, I don't know why, but the focus on my phone is sort of being bad. So, yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe it's the lighting in here. But anyways, oh, hold on, this is autofocus. Yeah, yeah, I think that's better. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, as you can see, they have multiple languages on here, but this is the 550 watt version. It comes with the power cord, the Thunderbolt cable, and the appropriate documentation on how to deal with it. I've been on the website already, so I have some idea of how you're supposed to set this up. I know that you need, supposedly, you know, you, you need the latest BIOS for your laptop. I'm not going to do that because this laptop already broke one time for me updating the BIOS on it because Alienware slash Dell doesn't know how to write a BIOS and it will brick the freaking machine. Um, maybe I'd get lucky this time, maybe I wouldn't, but I'm not going to risk paying another $300 for a motherboard because they don't know what the hell they're doing. So uh, if this doesn't work, it doesn't work, but uh, I'm willing to try it anyways. But I have my uh, one of my Gigabyte Vega 64 uh, Windforce overclock cards there, my other one's still on my desktop. And we're going to try that with this supply. According to their site, supposedly you need the 650 watt version for that card. Um, you shouldn't. I mean, that should be 550 watts. Should be more than enough power. Because all it should have to run is the box and the card. And the card, or the box should have like almost no power requirements. And the card shouldn't be using more than around 350 watts. Maybe 380 tops. So I don't know why they would think that you need a 650 watt. But whatever. We'll see what happens. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, what I'm going to do is you can uh, you can swap out the power supply on these things, just like you can with the other graphics amplifier, and I can just buy you know like an 800 watt or 1000 watt or something stupid and put it in there, so there's no problem with any card that I ever tried to use in it. But with that said, uh, I will stop the video for a second, and I'm going to get the stuff out of the box here, and we'll see what it looks like. I'll be right back. So we've got our documentation that comes with it, which is a pretty good size pamphlet but I think it's because it's like got five or six languages or something and then we've got our standard power supply cable which you figure it's got a standard desktop power supply in it so it's just a standard three prong uh, cable like you'd use for pretty much any desktop power supply and or most monitors like that one uh, use the same kind so if you don't have it or you lose it or need another one they're really cheap you can get them anywhere and then it comes with a Thunderbolt 3 cable, which I believe you have to have a Thunderbolt 3 port. I don't, I don't think it'll work on two, definitely not on one. It's not enough bandwidth. And although this is the same physical specification as USB-C in terms of, like this will fit in a USB-C port, uh, this is a much, much greater bandwidth. So I think it's 40 gigabits. Uh, so you definitely need Thunderbolt 3 to do this. Otherwise, uh, I think there's just too much latency from the video card. And then finally, this is the box itself, although it's uh, not turned on yet, of course, because I haven't hooked it up or anything. But you can see it's pretty good sized. Uh, it's about the same, you know, size as the Alienware graphics amplifier was. I think it might be uh, maybe a little smaller than that, actually. But good, good physical size. Uh, I bought this for a couple of reasons. Like I say, uh, one, because it'll work with basically any system that has Thunderbolt 3 instead of having to have the proprietary Alienware graphics amplifier port. Uh, also, like I say, it's a little bit physically wider, I think, and uh, from the pictures I saw, at least, it should have room for that card. In fact, I know it supports that card because it's right on their uh, 
your website that's one of the supported cards. That card would not fit properly in the Illinois graphics amplifier because the fan on it's too large. It's like a two and a half, almost three slot, uh, you know, fan shroud. So it takes up a lot of space in a case. And uh, when I tried to put it in my graphics amplifier, I couldn't close it. That would have worked theoretically, uh, barring any other problems, but I couldn't get it to work because the BIOS on this thing is not the latest revision. And you need, <clears throat> see that may cause a problem with this, I don't even know yet, but uh, you need supposedly BIOS revision like 1.2.4 on this uh, on this particular laptop to get Vega support through the graphics amplifier. And because I refused to attempt to upgrade the BIOS after the last debacle, um, you know, I just, I said screw it and I got this instead. Uh, but also, I think changing the power supply on this is easier and doesn't require modding of the case, whereas with the graphics amplifier, once again, if I had wanted to put in a bigger power supply, because the one that's in it is only like 350 watts, uh, at least the, the model that I have, the, the newer ones might come with a better power supply, but my old graphics amplifier, I have like one of the original ones, it's only got a 350 watt power supply, that isn't really enough to do this anyway, and so, uh, but I know that to swap the supply out of that, like the way that it fits into the, the housing, you have to physically like modify plastic if you wanted to re replace it with a more recent model uh, power supply because the way the power socket fits in all the most common power supplies, they have like a extended piece of plastic around the where you plug it in at the socket and that gets in the way on the graphics amplifier. And so you have to like shave down some of the plastic inside of the the amplifier to make it fit. Not that I couldn't do that, and I have a Dremel tool, but I just I would prefer not to physically, uh, you know, modify it unless I absolutely had to. And since this product is available, I just decided I'd give this a shot. I kind of wanted one anyway for a while. So that said, uh, I'm going to stop the video again here a second. I'm going to get this thing opened up, and we'll resume here in just a moment. Be right back. Well, much to my chagrin. Uh, I mean, it doesn't, it's not something you couldn't replace, but the power supply they have in there, I think that's a micro ATX size. And uh, you can buy those. Like, a, there's a company called FSP that makes, I think it's FSP or FPS, but I think it's FSP. But they make micro ATX supplies for a pretty high wattage. I'll have to see what's available on Amazon if this doesn't end up working with that card or there's problems or whatever. But you can see uh, the layout's pretty, pretty straightforward. Get your PCI Express slot. Uh, power supply, you know, 24 pin plugs in your 12 volt plugs in here, and you've got uh, looks like fan headers for a couple different fans. Now, what's kind of cool about this, let me turn this thing around here. Uh, something that they mentioned on the website that I can see how they how they're talking about you doing it. But you see the fan mounts on the side here. You can actually put a liquid cool GPU in here with an all-in-one cooler and mount the radiator and fan here. Uh, you know, you can have a lot of tubes and shit running around in there, but very cool that you can actually do that, that it fits in there. I just think, oh, well, look at that. It's made by FSP. I was right. <laughs> but, uh, so this is a 550 watt. Um, again, if that's not enough power, it really should be. I'd be very surprised. Um, I don't know why they're claiming again on their site that you need 660 or 650 watt to run this card in this in this enclosure because again it's the same I think it's the same wattage across the board it should be able to run this and have you know power to spare by a fair amount but if for some reason this doesn't work out like I say it kind of looks like you could almost fit an ATX supply in there maybe um, the way that the the screw screws rather are laid out on the back here uh, you can kind of I don't know how you can see that but like Kind of blurry again. Like you've got your corner spots there like you would, you know, uh, this is kind of laid out the same way. I wish I had another supply line around so we could just do a comparison. I might take the one out of my graphics amplifier later and just see how it lines up with this. I'm not sure how far over it would come physically. Yeah, you probably have to get this style. But again, I know that they're available and so I could probably for less than 100 bucks get, you know, like a 650 or a 700 watt or something and replace this if this ends up not being enough and still make this work it would just take you know i'd have to order a supply you usually can't find micro atx power supplies available it, like you know best buy wouldn't carry it obviously it might be on amazon if not on amazon i know that newegg that's where i've got fsp supplies before is on newegg so i know that they're available but anyways 
I'm going to do is again stop the video. I'm going to go ahead and try to put the card in there and we'll start firing things up and see what happens here in a minute. Be right back. Okay, so some pluses and minuses finally once I got this thing going. Uh, part of the noise too, both the laptop, like the fans constantly go in this thing and then uh, the GPU makes a lot of noise because the fans are really moving right now. Hold on a second here. Fix my focus again. I don't know this thing is doing that. Sorry, anyways, uh, so I can't seem to get it to work on the internal display, and by work, uh, I can get it to display an image on this, but gaming doesn't work. It's like you get like zero to one frames per second. It just doesn't work for gaming. Like the 3D acceleration isn't happening. Um, I don't know how to tell it to force it uh, to use that GPU. But what you have to do, uh, let's see how much you can see here. And again, sorry for the noise. This thing is not focusing, man. There you go. Okay, so uh, you have to disable, in the case of this particular laptop, and your system, of course, will undoubtedly vary depending on what you're using, you have to disable all other GPUs, especially, though, the dedicated card. Because in this case, uh, like, you figure how many PCI Express lanes each card is going to be needing uh, a minimum of eight. And so I have two NVMe drives on my laptop, which each use four lanes apiece. The video card uses eight. Uh, at a minimum, so that's 16. Most CPUs only offer 16 lanes. Now the reason I have a bunch in my, my Threadripper is because I use a lot of video cards and a lot of NVMe drives and things like that, and they all need a lot of lanes. But for a laptop, the most you're probably going to get is a 16 CPU, or excuse me, a 16 lane processor. So there's not enough resources to handle two dedicated GPUs, an integrated GPU, and an external GPU. But it, like I say, you shut those off and it works. Um, I was getting some error messages along the way that basically said, you know, it wasn't supported, even though it clearly is. Um, it just seems like maybe if I updated the BIOS on this laptop, it would work a little bit better. And I also had to reinstall the Thunderbolt software, which for some reason just wasn't working. Uh, it's like it wasn't detecting the card, and it was just uh, acting like some of the... Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this game. It seems like it's running pretty warm. It's like I was running the forest. Alright, that'll cool it back down. I don't know how what VR sock temps are and uh, VR memory, but those were running quite warm. The actual GPU is only running at about 68 degrees. It just uh, it feels pretty warm because the box is sitting right next to me here and the fan is blowing outward. Um, it almost might work better on this if I reversed it and had this as like an intake because the fans on the GPU are on the other side blowing out and it might work better as like a push pull to keep things a little bit cooler instead of trying to blow air in both directions that probably it gets no fresh intake that way so I might take this off and reverse the orientation of it and actually I've got uh, in my drawer here a box of some better Corsair fans so I might throw one of those in there there are uh, red RGB fan too which would look kind of neat on this so I might do that but anyways um, back to the, the story at hand I couldn't get uh, any play out of running games on the laptop display for some reason uh, like I say even with all these other cards disabled if I didn't in disable the Intel card it would automatically run them on the Intel card and I mean they'd run but not well and then uh, like I say I disabled that trying to force the Vega to take over, and I've played around with everything I can find in the Radeon settings to try to tell it, like, you know, games need to run on this dedicated card, and it's still, uh, like, they don't do it. So they just, uh, they run it like zero frames a second. I think they're almost not even, like, I think the GPU was getting zero utilization, so, uh, like, they were displaying on the screen, but nothing was doing any 3D acceleration, so it wasn't getting anywhere. Uh, but this, on a de dedicated display, or I should say an external display, when you hook it up, uh, which I've got over HDMI, um, I mean, everything is being detected like normal. That's not what I wanted. Hold on. Uh, let me go in display settings. Like, I even get my HDR options, which work. So, I mean, that works. You can watch video with it, and it does work to play games. Uh, I was just running The Forest a second ago, which was running in 4K on max settings it was only getting about 30 to 35 frames a second which is a bit worse than I was getting on my desktop uh, with 
Um, the same same GPU, but with my Threadripper. Uh, hold on a second. I got. I think this thing well, lets me record for five minutes. Yeah, sorry. My phone for some reason limits me. There must be a setting that I haven't figured out yet, but it like five minute clips. I think it's because I'm recording in 4K and it's like trying to save me drive space on my phone. So, anyways, uh, long story short, to, to even get this far with it, you pretty much have to have the latest BIOS revision, or in this case I don't, but I have a, a fairly close to the latest BIOS revision from Alienware on this machine. You have to have the latest Thunderbolt software available, although, um, again, it's like you download that from your manufacturer, so the, the version I download, uh, I downloaded was the same one I already had that came with the laptop, or at least uh, maybe auto-updated itself, but whatever the, the version was, was the same one that they had on their website, so there wasn't anything newer for me to install. It just helped me to reinstall it for some reason, like I totally wiped it, and then did a fresh install of the Thunderbolt 3 software, which again, you can get from your manufacturer's site. If you Google it, um, you know, you can uh, find links to things, or you can just go to your manufacturer's site and do like a search for Thunderbolt 3 and your in the driver support section and you should be able to find it. Um, but I reinstalled that and it did pick it up after that. Then I installed the AMD driver. I had to manually, like I said, I don't know, I didn't try it another way, but it was giving me like, uh, instead of Vega, you know, uh, Radeon RX Vega in the device manager, it was just saying like this generic Microsoft display adapter. Sorry, that was my cat. Um, and it had like a little question or the exclamation point on it, like it couldn't start the device. That's what it had been doing before when I tried to use it with the, um, you know, with the Alienware graphics accelerator. And when I tried to install a driver on that, it was blue screening. So on this, um, I did the same thing I did before, but it worked. Which was first of all, I used um, like basically you go in and tell you have the disk and that you want to manually select a driver yourself. You pick the driver from the like if you extract and run the driver installer from AMD, uh, it'll put like an AMD folder in your in your C drive. You go in and you find your, uh, maybe I can bring it up so I can show you which which folder and which file you need. So, C drive, AMD, uh, I think it was, maybe that wasn't it. Packages, drivers, display, INF, and I believe it's this, uh, this one right here, this C0, da, 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 da. When you tell it have disk and you go through and like you're manually telling it to select a driver, it'll only display the, the file from this folder that you can actually use. You click on that and then it'll, it'll tell you that, that that works for your Vega card. You continue, it installs that driver. After you do a reboot after that, then you can install the full package again to get uh, Radeon uh, Adrenaline, you know, like their control panel to work. And everything will be pretty much working for you. Like I say, this is how I got it to work with an external display. I will make an, uh, an additional video, I guess, if I ever figure out how to get it to work with the internal display. What's really dumb is their website doesn't tell you. There's no instructions on the Sonnet website as to how to make an external GPU uh, run your applications on your laptop. Uh, at least I couldn't find any, and I looked at all the manuals for my breakout box nothing says anything about how to do it at all like that seems to me like that would be a fairly uh, necessary piece of information that said uh, again this is Drizzle if you like this kind of content maybe click the like button or subscribe to the channel uh, if you have any questions go ahead and ask them in the comment section I'll do my best to answer them in a timely fashion and I will try here again I'll keep trying to get the uh, the internal display on the laptop to work that's what I really wanted this for is because uh, the OLED panel on this thing is gorgeous. Again, you can't really see it on here, and even if you could, you wouldn't get uh, the full benefit out of it because, you, you know, this is YouTube, and it's, you're just watching it, whatever you're watching it on, but a 13-inch QHD OLED panel is beautiful, especially for, uh, for gaming and video. It's great. So, that said, appreciate you watching. Uh, like I said, I'll try to get that, one, that other panel working, and I'll make another video soon. Have a great one. Bye.